fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the evangelist, apostle, and pure disciple. May his blessing Teacher David, the prophet and the king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. I love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Oh, how great is your goodness! which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you, in the presence of the sons of men. Savior and the King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And when all the people heard him, even the tax collectors justified God, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. And the Lord said to what then shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man is coming eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and a wine-bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by all her children. Glory be to God forever. Name the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. I don't want to give a sermon today. I don't want to give a sermon today. Because I was thinking about it 
How many sermons have we heard in our lifetime? How many? If you hear one or two or three sermons a week. And nowadays, we hear a lot of sermons. We have access to a lot of information. Probably during our lifetime, we'll end up hearing like tens of thousands of sermons and pieces of information about God. But what's the point of that? If we're just acquiring knowledge. And that's why I think there's no need to hear any more sermons. I think we know enough. I think we have enough information. We know many Bible verses. We know many Bible stories. We heard hundreds, if not thousands, of sermons so far. But the question is, what have we done about it? The goal is not to hear. The goal is to apply what we hear. And that's why we shouldn't feel happy we come and we hear a sermon. Because this is a means to a goal. That's not the goal itself. And that's why when I think about it, what sermon to talk about, I said, this is it. Not to give a sermon. But to point to what the readings of today, which may not seem to be actually related, but they're very related. And when we talk about the gospel, about St. John the Baptist, and we look at the different readings, you see, God wants to tell us, wants to tell us and send us a message. And now, when we're celebrating, we started the new Coptic year, the year of the Martins. These people were not about listening. They were not hearers, but the doers of the word, as St. James tells us today. These people that we celebrated their lives and their martyrdom, they were not just acquiring information and knowledge about God, but they were actually actioning everything in their life. Their life was a reflection of that knowledge. Knowledge wasn't the end. That was the beginning, so they can apply it. And that's why it's very important, as St. James said today. St. James said in the Catholic epistle, he said, but be doers of the world of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. So when we hear the word of God, we are deceiving ourselves if we are not doing it, if we're not applying it. Many of us feel happy, comfortable. I've heard two, three sermons this week. I'm following, I've got, you know, a Rabbi TV or CTV, whatever I have in my home, and I have it on all the time, and I'm hearing all these sermons in the background, and I'm hearing sermons every, every day, every second day, whatever. And then, what happens after that? We just, you know, we just turn that off and that's it. Or oh, I read the Bible every day and I've finished this book and that book and the Bible, excellent. Then what happens when I close the Bible? Do I just go on with my life normally? Is that it? Is that how it works? No. This is a means. Reading the Bible is not the goal. Attending liturgy and partaking of the Holy Sacrament is not the goal. There are means to making us come closer to Christ to actually apply what we learn in practice. And this is what we need to understand. That we need to understand there's in, our, in our lives there's, there's a disconnect between what we know and what we do. And this is something very serious. And, and we try to, you know, calm our conscience and tell ourselves we're doing fine because we are hearing a lot. We're attending a lot. We are reading a lot. But the question is, what are we doing with all this information? There's many people out there who are theologians. They are experts and got masters and PhDs in theology. And they can quote to you verses and the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But that's the, that's the end of their relationship with God. They can do all this academic stuff about the Bible and Christ. But where is the personal relationship? What are they doing in their life to reflect that? And this is the message for us today. And that's why that's not a sermon. Because if that's a sermon, it's going to be another one of the tens of thousands of sermons we're going to be hearing over our lifetime. This cannot be a sermon. This has to be application. I wish instead of talking about something, we do like workshops. We do something practical. Let's get together and apply one of the many virtues that we've been learning about all our life. Let's put it to practice. 
let's practice the virtue of love. So when you go outside after the liturgy, we say it within, say, oh, that was a beautiful sermon, really enjoyed it. Now we apply it. We apply it by showing love to each other. But what we do instead is we attend and partake of the Holy Sacraments. And sometimes while we're still inside the church, we don't show that love. We don't show that love. We're still inside the church grounds. We may even end up fighting with each other. We may end up being upset with each other. You know, I want to get this food first. Someone pushed in the line. This is late. And we're starting stressing and we're starting getting angry at each other. What happened? We forgot what we heard. No, we didn't forget. We remember it. But we think that's it. I've done my part. I heard it. That's it. I move on with my normal life. No. I heard it so I can apply it. Any theory without application is useless. Imagine if you go to university and study for six years, but all you study is theory. You come out to the workplace, you have no idea what you're doing because there's no practical component. But now they realize they have to have a practical component. Otherwise, theory by itself is useless. And here, there was a very strong message from St. James himself, only a few verses, but they're very, very strong. He said he, if anyone among you thinks he's religious, I think I'm religious, I come to church, I read the Bible, I pray from the Agbeya, I listen to many servants, sermons, I'm religious. That's my definition of being a religious person. St. James said, no, no. If you think you are religious and you don't control your tongue, this religion is useless. Wow, that's a very strong comment. If you think you're religious and you can't control your tongue, this one's religion is useless. What about all the sermons I know and all the verses and all the books I've read? Useless. Why? Because what's the point of doing this if they're not applied by controlling my tongue? St. James is big on controlling the tongue, especially chapter 3. Can you see what God is trying to tell us today? He even said, okay, so what is the the right religion, the pure and undefiled religion before God. What God, does God define as pure religion? Is it three masses a week? Reading the seven Agbears prayers? Having Holy Communion twice a week or three times a week? Confessing every month? What is the definition of the pure religion according to God's definition? Is it doing the everything the thing that we do as a Christian? He said very simply, this is the pure and the father religion. To visit, or visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Notice what God did here. He put visiting the orphans and widows in their trouble. That's an action. It's not theory. It's not reading things. It's not listening to things. It's doing, visiting. There's labor. There's effort. And visiting who? Visiting the fragile people, the vulnerable people. Visiting each other. That's showing our love towards each other. This is a pure religion. And keep yourself unspotted from the world. Keep your purity. Keep yourself. How do you get that to do that? By following the commandments of God. When I love God, I follow his commandments. I'll keep myself pure, unspotted from the world. I'm not going to be conformed to the world. I'm going to understand that I am unique, I am different, I am Christian. I'm going to lead a Christian life, worthy of the calling of which I was called. Because I don't belong to the world. So my life will be different, will be unspotted from the world. The world is corrupted. But I'm going to, my goal as a Christian is to keep myself unspotted, uncorrupted from the world. That's my part with God, that's my relationship with God, loving God. And loving people by visiting them and taking care of the poor and orphans and widows and those in trouble. Love God, love people. The summary of the commandments, we always say that. We always say it, we always know it. But when are we going to start applying? We heard enough. It's about time that we apply. I don't think we need to know any more information. I think we have enough information to start applying. Let's make Christianity not a religion of theory, but of practice. And to follow what these things, and that's why 
if we look today at the gospel, our Lord God and Savior himself praised Saint John the Baptist. He said, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Why? How many books did Saint John the Baptist write? How many PhDs he's done in theology? How many wonderful sermons he gave? He was very strict. He gave very harsh words to the people. But in a very short period of time, he prepared the people for Christ. You know how hard his job was? What he was doing, his service was so hard. In a very short period of time, it could be less than a year. He prepared the house of people. Many people came and repented and confessed their sins. There, were, there was a period of 400 years of dryness. There was no prophecies. There was no prophets in Israel. The last one was Malachi. And about for 400 years after, then St. John the Baptist came. It was a dry period, a very dry spiritual period. The spirituality of people were very low. St. John the Baptist had a very, very tough job to do to prepare the people for Christ. But why he did an amazing service is because he wasn't about hearing. He wasn't about talking. He was about doing. And he preached by his lifestyle. And that's why he stood out. People looked at him and said, he's different. The way he used to dress, the way he used to eat. You know, his life of really ascetic life. And he was really sharp and he was really courageous. And he did not like anything that goes wrong. And he will say it as it is. If anything wrong, he will say it. He will even put his life at risk. And he died for saying the truth. That's the life that people were attracted to. Why? Because he wasn't a hearer of the word. Of the word. He was a doer. He was doing. It was action. That's what he was doing. And as I said, we're celebrating the new year of the martyrs, the Coptic new year. It's the year of the martyrs. What did they Achieved, they were doers. It was all about action. Okay, action, martyrdom. When they heard there was martyrdom, they went and had the courage to go and offer their lives for martyrdom. They didn't say, I'm going to write a book, or I'm going to say a sermon, I'm going to do this. No. Their biggest sermon was when people saw them offering their life as a sacrifice. And that's why when we hear in the Sinexarium the lives of, and the stories of the saints, we hear one saint got martyred, thousands believed. There was no sermons, there was no teaching, but there was action. And this is what we need to focus on. We need to tell myself, I'm not requested to be a Christian on Sunday. I'm not requested to be a Christian and show the Christian face of facade, I should say, only on Sunday. But more importantly, I need to be a Christian the other days during the week as well. It's through my actions, through my deeds. And that's why Allah just Christ said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine. That's an action. The sun doesn't come out and say, I'm out. I'm going to give you a sermon on about a heat and light. No, the sun comes out and does and shines its light and radiates its heat. Action. That's how we feel the presence of the sun. Not through sounds through action, things that we can perceive, things that we can see. And this is our role as Christians. We need to be a lot of the world to God, so they may see your good works and glorify your God. And they see your good works, action again. Action. And as we know, I can have all the faith in the world. But as the Bible tells us, faith without works is what? Dead. Useless, as Saint James said here. This religion is useless. Why? It has no meaning. Why? Because even the devils believe and they tremble. They believe in God and they tremble. But the difference between us and them is we action. Our, we need to show our faith through our action. We need to focus on what we're doing. Our faith through our action. We need to focus on our action, what we're doing. Is my, are my actions reflective of my faith? Do I claim to be an honest Christian and love sermons about honesty and love talking about honesty to people, but when I go and deal in the world with government departments, I'm full of fraud and deceit to get some extra money? How does that reconcile? How can I say I'm a Christian and I believe in honesty 
and faithfulness, that's Christian values, but then my action doesn't reflect that. How can I say I've heard many sermons about loving people, but what am I doing with, oh no, I've got, I've got some grudges against people because I've got special circumstances. They did that to me, they did that to me, and they did this and did that, so I can't forgive them. But I believe in forgiveness. It's very nice sermons I heard from Abuna today about forgiveness. Beautiful sermon, but no, 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 that's, I'm not applying that. That's, that's, that's not for me. Can you see the disconnect? That's very serious. That means our religion is useless. That means we don't really understand what it takes to be a Christian. And that's why it's a beautiful opportunity. Every time we start a new year, we started the Coptic New Year a few days ago. It's never too late. Now God is sending us a strong message to wake up and start applying enough knowledge and let's start practicing and applying that knowledge. And that starts by repentance. If I don't acknowledge my sins, if I don't acknowledge that I'm going in the wrong direction, I'll never fix it. So I want everyone together, all together in one heart, to raise our heart to God and ask Him as we're starting the first Sunday of the new Coptic year. Ask God to accept our repentance. God, accept our repentance. Help me to find where I was going wrong. Help me to humble myself and not be content and not think I'm okay because I have a lot of knowledge, because I'm a servant, because I'm a priest, because I think I know many information. That will not get me into heaven. No. This is useless. What's more important is I need to apply this to my everyday life. Not just in front of the people I know, but in front of everyone, in my, in my different aspects of my life. I need to start with repentance. Let's go and repent and confess and start fresh and really focus on the things that, that matter and really apply. Say, today I'm going to apply a virtue of love. Today I'm going to apply a virtue of gentleness. Today I'm going to apply a virtue of forgiveness and really do it. And then rely on the verses I know about that topic. Rely on the sermons that I've heard. Rely on the books that I've learned, I've read, to apply this and to give me strength so I can apply this into practice. That's how it works. If we do that, we'll find ourselves growing in virtues every day. We'll find ourselves truly growing in our personal relationship with Christ. Then we are true Christians then our religion is actually making a difference. Then we are not hearers of the word anymore, but we are doers. And that's the message from God to us today. So we can be like St. John the Baptist and be strong and make a big impact in the society that we live in and be like all the martyrs that we're celebrating with the new Coptic here as our heroes, but we need to follow in the footsteps. Glory be to God forever.